Um, so like I said, we have a great webinar for you, how to take your blog from eh to dine o might. Um, again, I'm Monica Jansen. I am the principal of Jansen Communications. And as you can see from my title, title I am a kick-ass copywriter. Um, and my company at, at, at Jansen Communications, we help uh, companies, many of them small businesses, define their brand and create content that drives traffic and brings in leads. When you have content that helps you stand out and get noticed, you can focus on growing your business. And joining me is my good friend and uh, coll frequent collaborator, Nicole Krug. Hi, everybody. Um, I think I know some of you, but my name is Nicole Krug, and my company is Socialite. And we are out to make the Internet a friendlier place. Uh, we do that by bringing together your brand strategy on anything and everything online. We help with websites, email marketing, social media, um, and we uh, sometimes work with awesome copywriters like Monica to help crystallize your brand strategy and do anything and everything you need online. Awesome sauce. All right, let's get started. So really in this day and age, a blog is no longer an option. Um, and that's because businesses with active blogs have more website traffic and visibility online, they generate more leads, and they earn a hell of a lot more money. So, Monica, why do businesses actually make more money when they block? Well, then we can back up from what I just said, basically. So, the more you blog, and, and we're going to touch on this um, you know, later in the presentation, the more you blog, the more active your website appears to search engines. Search engines really like active websites that are being updated um, constantly. And the more you update your website, the more traffic you're going to get. So it turns into a really nice um, feedback loop, at, at least um, you know, from the search engine optimization, search engine results um, perspective. Anyway, as you're, as you're constantly putting out great information um, that, that your, your target market is interested in, you're going to start generating more leads. They're going to see that you're an expert in your field, um, and they're going to want to figure out if they can work with you. Um, you generate more leads. Your website becomes more and more active online, and this whole your whole blog turns into a nice feedback loop. You're getting your expertise out there. You're um, gaining exposure. You're building brand awareness, and more and more people are coming to you. So that's how you earn more money. Awesome. Awesome sauce. All right. So here are some mind-blowing stats that are going to back up what we just talked about. Companies with 51 to 100 pages on their website generate 48% more traffic than those with 1 to 50 pages. Oops. Companies nearly double their sales, um, sales leads by increasing blogging frequency from 3 to 5 times per month to 6 to 8 times per month. So again, you, know, you double your, the number of blogs that you're putting out there every month, and you're going to double your sales. Companies that blog once or twice per month generate 70% more leads than those who don't blog at all. And I think this is a really important statistic because it shows that you do not have to be putting a blog post out there every day. I mean, awesome, if, you know, if you can, um, but you don't have to, and you're still gonna you're still gonna have the benefit, um, you know, that a blog brings. Um, companies that publish at least 15 blogs per month get five times more traffic than those who don't blog. Again, th these are some really, really nice statistics, um, and they're important to keep in mind. Sorry, I didn't mean to switch to the next page <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> you are ready to go. But um, a quick question, because I mean, when we're talking about 15 blogs per month, I mean, that's a lot yeah. of content. Um, and so, it is. Um, you know, some, not everybody can do that. So as much as we'd all love to get the traffic, can you still get benefits if you are just blogging once or twice a month? Is that still going to help your company? Yeah, absolutely, because you're still putting your expertise, you know, out there. You're still sharing your knowledge. 
and and you're you're not just sharing it on your blog, right? And and again, we're going to talk about this later, but you're sharing your blog post on social media, you're putting it out there on LinkedIn, you're sharing it on Twitter. Um, if you use Facebook, um, you're probably sharing it there. You're sharing it in your email marketing newsletter. So it's really it creates a really nice ripple effect. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So how to find your niche, and this is one of the hardest things for small businesses because there are already so many blogs out there. It doesn't really matter what your industry um, is or what you do. There's already blogs out there blogging about what, what it is you do and what it is you know. So differentiating yourself is really, really important. So how to find your niche. First, what is your passion? Whatever you are most passionate about, is what is going to flow most easily um, from your thoughts out onto paper, or really out onto uh, a word a word document. Um, so I always start with that. What is your passion? What do you care most about when it comes to your business? What are the most popular pages on your website? Now this will tell you what people are most interested in when they come um, to visit you online. And that is a great um, rule of thumb to follow when you are trying to narrow down the focus of your blog. It'll tell you what topics people are, are naturally interested in and um, what they want to learn more about. And your blog posts are a great way to do that. Uh, this is kind of the same as, as the most popular pages on your website. What are you asked about most often? What are your, what are your FAQs? You can write full-length blog posts. Um, based on an FAQ and really expand on on the questions that you are that you are asked most often. Again, this is information people are looking for and interested in. What are your differentiators? And this is kind of connected to what is your passion. Um, but what makes your small business different? What are you doing differently than other people? What makes you stand out? That's uh, um, great to think about when you are trying to narrow down the focus of your blog. Monica, these are, you know, these seem like simple questions, but a lot of times it, this is a lot of kind of defining the essence of your brand. Um, yeah. and these are questions that people struggle a lot with. And so um, with some of the work that you do, because you work with a lot of different companies and a lot of blogs, is this some of the ways that you help people? Like, do you have exercises or things that you, people can do to help figure this out? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, I can do either a full-on brand assessment or a mini brand assessment. Um, that would just be focused on the blog. A full-on brand assessment, obviously, is 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 focused on your overall um, brand, and a lot of it is is digging into what it is you do and how you do it and and why you do it. So it you know to help really um, get to the essence of what your brand is and probably clarify things that you we're only vaguely aware of or make you think of your company in a new way. And I, it's really fun to do. Um, I, I learn as much as, you know, the person that, that I'm, in, the small business owner that I'm interviewing. So, yeah, it's something we can absolutely help with. That's that is fun. <laughs> it sounds fun. And, it, you know, it sounds like with a lot of things that you're going and a lot of things you're talking about, some ways to think about the blog and one of the reasons the blog is it's, it's almost a way to really just keep telling your brand story. Um, mm -hmm. You know, which the ways with with blogging and your posts and um, you know you tell about you have an about me at the page, which some people read and some people don't on your website. But really, when you keep blogging and you keep talking about some of these things and your differentiators, um, you're telling your brand story over and over again, and you're telling what's different and special about you. And so you just kind of keep reinforcing that message over again, which is um, not what you get to do all the time if you just have a static website. So that's one of the great things about having a blog. Yeah, no, that's an awesome point. Thanks for bringing it up. And let's see how many more times I say awesome. Is anyone keeping yeah. track? <laughs> it can be a drinking game. <laughs> okay, next slide. Topic ideas. Once you figure out what your blog is going to be you know, about in the, in the general overall sense, this is, God, this is like the biggest sticking point for so many people, and I struggle with it too. Even though it's so easy for me to blog for clients, when it comes to my own um, company and my own blog, I'm like, I, I get stuck. I get stuck just like anyone else. So here are the topics I rely on. Um, FAQs, we just discussed um, that in our last slide. 
insider tips, um, sharing your very um, specific knowledge is so incredibly valuable um, to, to your audience. Um, again, I've talked about this already. It positions you as, as an expert, um, possibly even as a thought leader. But the more you share your knowledge, the more generous you are, the more people are going to trust you, and the more credibility you're going to build in your field. Um, sharing customer stories is an awesome way to build credibility also because it allows someone else to talk about how great you are instead of you, you know, blowing your own horn. Industry news, that is going to somehow impact um, your, your customers or your clients is great to, great to share because they probably don't keep up with, you know, the, the news that you follow. You know what's really great about industry news is sometimes what you can do is, you know, we know news is out there, but figuring out like how it impacts me or you or your customers or, or what have you. Like for instance, um, there's always news about Facebook, but um, crystallizing it down and saying, okay, here's the three things that you need to take away and deal with that. Um, when you can kind of do a perspective and just boil through all the mess and say, here's your takeaway, this is what you need to deal with, um, that's when you become really a differentiator and a real helpful piece to your customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great point. Very good. And you know, it's it's almost similar with book reviews too. Like if there's if you read a book that you think is helpful to your customers um, or your, your your client base, and you share what you learned in that book, same thing. You know, you're doing the legwork for for them. We don't all we don't have time. I don't remember the last time I read a book, which is horrible. I used to read constantly, um, but we're all like that. So if you can do legwork for 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 them and share what you learned, that's that's awesome. That's a huge benefit to them. Obviously, if you launch a new product or service, you're going to want to blog about that. Um, how tos This is similar to insider tips, but you know, sharing how you do something. Um, with step-by-step -step detailed instructions is um, it's wonderful and it's not really going to cannibalize on on what it is you do because we all have limited time and we are going to turn to each other you know for for the services that we provide like I do not have time to do my own bookkeeping anymore but it would still be interesting for me to read you know finance tips for small businesses because we need to be aware of this. Um, lists, you can curate lists of, you know, um, top industry news for the year, um, the best books you read and what you learned from them, um, top blog posts um, for the past year, um, top tips on how to do something from industry experts. People love, love, love lists. Love them. They're like catnip. Um, a contrarian point of view. So say, you know, well, Nicole already brought up Facebook. So say, uh, you know, everyone's blogging about how Facebook isn't a great um, social media network for small businesses anymore. You could turn that around and say, no, it is, and here's why. Um, so just taking you know, a point of view that's different from what everyone else is saying is going to help you um, really stand out in your blogs. Um, pop culture, this is where you can have um, some fun. Um, you could reference, um, God, Kanye West continually makes a fool out of himself, and that was brought up in the Saturday Night Live 40th anniversary special on, um, uh, that was aired this past Sunday night a few times. Um, so the, Oh, go ahead. You actually, no, I was just going to say, because you're bringing in a couple of things that um, get into trending, right? Is mm -hmm. You brought up Kanye West, and you brought up the Saturday Night Live 40th anniversary special. Um, both of those are topics that are often trending, which means there's a lot of conversation about it. And pop culture has a wealth of things that are trending topics. Um, and depending on what you do, you can often get into things that are very topical and join conversations. So... Um, I'm looking at the list, and I see some of our attendees, and I see some names that I recognize. And let's say we, uh, if you're a photographer, for instance, um, you could talk about, you know, wedding photos or different things, you know, because there's all kinds of things. There's, there's 
always celebrity weddings that are out. Um, and you could talk about the photos that are out, or with the royal pregnancy, you could talk about those photos. And um, maybe you could even take the contrarian view and say, here's how I would do it differently. Um, whether you're a photographer, whether you're a wedding planner, whether whatever it is, there's all these things in pop culture that you can jump on the trending bandwagon and really kind of bring your point of view and establish your expertise um, by getting in on these popular topics. So sometimes it takes a little planning, and, um, cause you, and you also have to be really hot on what's going on, because um, if you do something you know, a week or 10 days later, it's a little, um, it's a little past time, and you lose that, that really hot sizzle. Um, but if you can take advantage of it, then you do great to get in on, on that conversation. Yeah, like you, this week you could probably still write about the Saturday Night Live 40th anniversary special, but by next week it's old news and people have moved on to something else. So, um, And what's what's coming up? The Oscars, is that this weekend or next weekend? But that's coming up, so you can even jump on that ahead of time. Um, and, then, you know, again, this is something fun. If you can tie it to your business, it's it's fun. People are interested in it naturally. We, we love celebrities for some reason. <laughs> I'm one of them. I don't know why. Um, so anyway, um, helpful tips. This goes back to insider tips. This is tied to how-tos, but again, just sharing your knowledge, sharing it freely um, is, is going to be appreciated by people and build trust. All right, so um, now we know what we're going to blog about. We need to talk about how to write awesome blog post titles because without an awesome blog post title, I think I'm on 10 awesomes at this point, um, no one's going to read your blog posts. And so all of that thought and all of that work that you wrote into writing this wonderful um, your blog posts is going to disappear, and here's why. Eight out of 10 people read headlines, but only two out of 10 keep reading. That's an, a huge drop. And in fact, I do this myself when I'm skimming through email. Um, I will I just judge you know the the email based on whether I want to open it or, or I judge the email based on the subject line and that tells me whether or not I want to open it and people are going to do this with your blog post titles too so here's a formula you can use anytime for any blog post start with your number or trigger word add your adjective add a keyword and we're going to talk about keywords in a little bit, and add a promise. So, for example, your blog post title could be 10 um, important things you need to know about Facebook um, for social media marketing. So it's kind of backwards. I put the promise a little bit before the keyword. Um, and that's an, a long blog post title, but it includes all of those elements. So jot, jot this down because this is re, this is um, this is a really nice little formula, and and like I said, you can use it anytime. All right. Speaking of SEO and so, keywords, Monica, keywords and <laughs> SEO. So Monica told you early on that one of the big um, advantages of having a blog was that it brought leads to your website. And one of the ways that it does that is through search, uh, SEO and basically helping you show up more in Google. So some of the elements of your blog that sh will help you have good SEO is, first off, is um, your blog doesn't have to be super long, but it should have about 300 words um, at minimum because that's Google's minimum number of words for it to have what it considers enough content to be scannable and for it to go into the search engine. Um, keywords. Keywords are something that Monica has referred to a couple of times. If you're not terribly familiar with keywords and SEO, keywords are um, the primary thing that people are going to be searching for. So we say keywords, but it could be a phrase. So it could be um, photos of a wedding. It could be um, you know, flowers in summertime, whatever it is. It could be social media marketing. So a phrase could be up to three words or so, but it could just be one thing. When you're identifying your keywords, what you tend to want to do is think not in marketing terms or in your terms, but think how people are going to put something into a search engine. 
that um, so think more intuitively how are people going to want to search what are they going to search for um, and so then what I tend to recommend is write your post first make it make sense make it readable and then go back through and try and get your keywords in a little bit more make your post make sense first but sometimes if you try and write with keywords in, in mind it doesn't work as well um, and then what you want to do is sync up your titles and headlines and tags so your title is the title of the post that your uh, Monica just talked through and then the headlines are um, if you if you're in WordPress or you've ever done anything it's the bolder elements it's, it's an h1 or h3 tag that you can put on your post um, the algorithm that Google uses, it likes to see um, your keywords and the headings. And it also, when you use headings, it also makes your post very scannable and easy to read because you have to remember, people like to just skim online. So you want to balance that good element of SEO as well as just making your post very user-friendly. So um, links are, um, links can be really helpful for a couple of reasons. One. Um, in just kind of good web manners, um, and that is sharing links and citing different things, um, and kind of the the modern day way of attributing sources in different ways is linking back to the way you found it. Um, and Google just likes to see that you are sharing and you are linking out to other sources on the web. So that's just an, a little bonus, and it helps your um, it helps you in the search engines. Um, and then finally is just having visuals. Visuals are really a good thing. Not only do they help your posts um, look good, it helps users do. Um, we know that old adage, a picture tells a thousand words. Um, but it helps in your search engine as well, especially if you put um, a kind of what's called an alt tag in there, which is basically just describing your image. It helps the search engine understand what your image is. So again, put that keyword that you're using on your image. Uh, let's see, we also have a question that says, can you give more examples of blog title using the formula? So let's just take um, sure. this example because we've got a slide going in here. So our slide title is five elements of SEO. So I'm just going to continue that out. So in this case, it would be five elements of SEO to make a kick-ass blog because um, that's what Monica does, right? So you could do that type of thing um, for... Uh, we'll go back to photography. Five photos that show your great style. Um, you could do some other different things. It doesn't always have to be a number, but it could. Um, I put a blog post out today um, that was called "Building a Brand or Build a Brand Persona and Stand Out from the Competition." Um, so that wasn't a list, but I usually do do lists as well because again, those numbers make great impacts. So in this case, so our five elements of SEO to make a great blog. Um, SEO is our keyword, um, and making a great blog is the promise. Uh, mm -hmm. So can you address the best way to make an alt tag? Um, so tags in WordPress are the alt. So if you are using WordPress, um, on that image, it says, what is, um, describe your image. That's a way to, it's not, it's not called alt tag, um, it, but it's called describe your image. So um, basically, if you're using WordPress, go ahead and put that in there, uh, and that's a great way to put your um, that little image file or when you're editing your image, you can go ahead and edit that in there. Uh, and there's also, if you are using WordPress, there's great SEO plugins that you can use. Um, I like um, Yoast SEO, and it actually gives you a grade. It gives you green for good and red for bad. Um, so there's some other ways that you can certainly help if you're using WordPress. There's other, um, there are other plug plugins, but yeah, well, Yoast is the most popular. And, and another thing that's really great about Yoast too is um, it will tell you exactly what you can do to improve your blog post. It'll tell you to add an image. It'll tell you to add an alt tag or description to your to your image. It'll tell you to increase the word count. Um, so you, you, you'll learn a lot just by using this one simple plugin. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for the questions, guys. You know, and you know what's funny? I'm not seeing them. You're seeing them. So let me know if there are any questions directed to me. Um, all right. 
So tips on sharing posts. So um, Nicole, I'll, I'll let you continue here because you are our uh, digital online digital marketing expert. Awesome. So um, like I said, some of the reasons um, to have a blog is to get your name out there and get your expertise. And um, it's a great way to get out there. So um, your blogs can really be an anchor for your social media strategy. Even if you're doing virtually nothing else for social media, um, if you blog regularly, that can go on virtually any network that you have. So um, again, if you're in WordPress, hook your, uh, hook your blog up to Jetpack, and that can even um, share for you automatically. You can sync in your, um, your, most of your networks, so be it Facebook, be it Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever it may be. Um, that can just post automatically so you can publish things when you go. Um, the other thing is that when you put a blog out, just because you put your blog out and you publish once doesn't mean that it has to only be shared once. Um, for instance, let's go back to our example, five elements of SEO for a great blog. Um, that is considered evergreen green comment. That's our content, excuse me. Um, it's not going to be content that only gets read once and then it's dead a week later. And so you can make one, you can make multiple posts from that. So if you have five tips in there, that might be five separate posts that you can put out on Twitter. Um, and again, you can might recycle those posts uh, for a couple months from now because you have to think, especially in your Twitter audience, that people are on at different times and things move so fast. So if people don't see it right then, then they're not going to see it. So maybe you put a post up at 8 a.m. and then you put that same post a few days later at 4 p.m. Um, so you don't want to post everything like, repeatedly at the same time, but you can really amplify your content um, by sharing it multiple times down the road and throughout the month. Um, you now you have to be watchful of this because again, if we talked about that pop culture content and that trending content, that is going to have a limited time, right? You're only going to have a few days or maybe a week, two at most, to share that post out. Um, but if you do have more evergreen content, you can share that for months. Sometimes I still see posts out from 2013. And if it still makes sense, then why not? Yeah, good point. Oh, wait, we, you talked about Jetpack for whatever reason. Okay, so let's talk about a foolproof blogging formula. We've already talked about, you know, that the, the foolproof formula for writing awesome blog post titles. Here's my blogging formula. Open with a story. A story is going to grab people's attention. You know, if, if, you're, if you can write about a personal experience or um, a, 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 an experience with one of your clients, all the better. People are going to want to find out what happens. Next, explain what your reader will learn. There's nothing that drives me cr more crazy than um, uh, reading an entire blog post and, or getting halfway through and not really understanding what the point of the blog post is. Um, so just make, make it clear up front. You're doing yourself and your readers um, a service. Turn your knowledge into action items. So instead of just talking about you know, what it is you know, tell people how to put that knowledge to work for, for themselves. Um, that goes back to what we talked about with the, um, with the, with the um, topic ideas, you know, the how-tos and the insider tips, um, you know, sharing your knowledge in a way that can be used is, is more valuable than just expounding on a topic and giving your opinion. Uh, close your blog post with a, with a call to action that is going to spur the reader to do something else, um, whether it's you know download an ebook or subscribe to your blog post so they can can continue to learn more on this topic or sign up for your newsletter or maybe try um, a, uh, you know sign up for a free demo or a free consultation, something. You've already gotten their attention, so you want to do what you can to keep it. And last, and Nicole's already talked about this, um, you, you write your headline at the end. And one of the reasons 
I write my headline at the end um, is because the the angle of my blog post might change while I'm while I'm writing it. So I'll just you know I'll start out with a kind of like a, a dummy title, just like a broad idea of what the topic is on, and then I go back and I use that um, you know formula um, and and write a new write a new headline. Okay. So here are my seven rules to blog by. Rule one, have a personality. A great example of this is the Middle Finger Project, as you can tell from the title. This is a blog with a very big personality. Um, and uh, it's written by a woman named Ash Amberg. Um, I'm not, I can't remember where she's located um, in the country, but she's freaking hilarious, and and she has she has a big personality, and she's not afraid to to let it show, and and it helps her stand out quite a bit. Um, so her blog um, is sassy, irreverent, and very smart. It's really cool. You should check it out. Rule two. Rule, <laughs> rule two. Tell a story. A great example is Peter Shankman. He all his all every single one of his blog posts is based on uh, personal experience. Uh, I learn a lot. He's a great writer. He has a really interesting life too. Rule three: be consistent. A great example of this is Goop, Gwyneth Paltrow's um, lifestyle um, website. Um, and Goop is is great um, from the consistency perspective because it's the same style, the same format, the same handful of topics every week, and the publish date does not change. The Goop blog post comes out every Thursday. What, Rule one four. Note, oh, one sorry, note go ahead. on that. Yeah. Um, consistency is awesome, um, but when you start out, you might need to do some testing to figure out um, where you're going to shine. Right, because I started out posting on Thursdays, and I eventually figured out that Wednesdays were a much better day for me. Um, and so you might find uh, when you're like Goop has good topics, good um, good publish dates, but maybe you eventually you need to test your topics and you need to test your time. So um, don't be afraid like, if you start out on Thursdays and maybe that doesn't work for you. Um, don't be afraid to change it up until you find your sweet spot. Mm, and that's true for marketing in general, isn't it, Nicole? You just keep testing, keep experimenting. Things change, technology changes, and the way people people use information and look for it online changes. So it's very true. Yeah. All right. So rule four: um, share your knowledge freely. We have already talked about this a lot. HubSpot is one of my favorite sources for all things marketing and sales, and they've even started um, a new blog that's just for it's called the Agency Post, and it's just for marketers. Um, every single one of their blog posts is actionable. Rule five, use visuals. We've already talked about this. Um, a great example is Social Media Examiner, another one of my favorite blogs. Every blog post is filled with visuals from the beginning of the blog post all the way down to the end that illustrate the author's point. So if they're talking about Twitter, they'll keep inserting little screenshots of, of what they're talking about as they go. Um, it's really cool. It must take a long time to create those blog posts. Uh, rule six, write in plain English. One of my clients is an IP law firm called Cloudigy Law. They're based in Tyson's. They're a great group of people. And hey, if lawyers can write like humans, so can you. Rule seven, make your post scannable. That's because, um, and I do this all the time, and the reason you want to do this is because people aren't necessarily going to read every single word in your blog post. So what I do is add multiple subheaders to every post. So example, I'm teaching you, um, you know, the 10, I'm writing about 10 blog post topics. Every single one of those blog post topics will be bolded, and then I'll have two to three sentences underneath that further um, explains the, the idea behind it. But you don't need to read those two to three sentences. 
that subheader is going to tell you pretty much everything you need to know. All right. You guys have already asked some awesome questions. Does anyone have, have another one? Oh, we do. Oh. Goody, goody. So we have another question on, can we address the best post, uh, posting dates and how to figure out the best time, um, date or time for the client base? So, Monica, mm. do you want to hit that first? You want yeah. You, you know who I go to when I'm looking for this information, actually? Um, oh, damn it. What's his name? He used to work for HubSpot. He's, he's called the social media scientist. So if you just Google um, the social media scientist, you'll find him. Um, and he analyzes, it's driving me crazy that I can't remember his name. Nicole, do you know who I'm talking about? I don't. Stan. Or not that particular one. No. I mean, there's, there's, there's sources of information, but he's one of my favorite. Um, and and he, do, he will dig into um, a lot of... Of, of data. Um, HubSpot certainly collects a lot of it um, and he'll dig into it and he will um, he will tell you based on what they see you know behind the scenes at HubSpot the best day and the best time to to do all sorts of things. Oh it's Dan Zarella. Oh okay. double R yeah I do double know that R, name. Double L. Yeah I have his book actually. Um, Dan Zarella will tell you the best time to tweet, the best time to post on Facebook, the best time to post it on LinkedIn, the best time to do email marketing. Um, so if, if and I, I don't remember this stuff, <laughs> so I'll just well, look him up. <laughs> and the, you know what? Those are those are generally good for broad, right? When you're getting started, when you um, if you haven't blogged, if you haven't tweeted, if you haven't, those are really good places to start. Um, mm -hmm. And then what I tend to do is I follow that up with analytics. Um, if you ha if you don't already have um, Google Analytics hooked up to your blog, start um, start now because <laughs> then you can um, what you can do is then you can um, you can post uh, or you can excuse me you can get the specifics of what your particular blog is doing um, and you can see when traffic is coming sometimes and what you might find because um, there's one client that Monica and I share that he has a posting schedule and even though he posts let's say every Saturday and Tuesday, often his posts aren't read till Thursday. Um, does that mean he's going to change the schedule? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but so sometimes it's when the traffic is hitting your site. Sometimes it's when people are sharing uh, most. Sometimes it also needs to be just when it makes sense for you to write. Um, so all of those factors need to go in um, of, of all of when it makes sense. But you can look at your in on. So you can start with um, some of these broad analytics from somebody like Dan Zarella, but then add it up um, with what's actually happening on your site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. Any other questions? No? Right. I don't see any other popping up. Oh, okay. one more. Oh, okay. Um, my fabulous Her Corner group recommended that I stop struggling with writing when I am a photographer. Sounds mm. like a comment. Uh, I'm, that sounds like a comment. I'm not sure if the question is um, <laughs> maybe should you outsource your blog. I'm going I'm to take a guess and say um, maybe the question is should you outsource the blog. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but yes. They, all, they said only use images. What do you think? Um, uh, okay. Well, yeah, you take this, Nicole. Okay. Um, so that goes that goes back and forth. Um, so images are great. You're, if you only do images, you're not going to get enough content to get SEO benefits um, as a ranking. So if you're just going to do images, um, then do Pinterest, do Tumblr, do more of a social media site. Your um, images are not going to take a blog. Um, commentary, but so if you want to do images with commentary um, or give some commentary on what the setting was, what that was, um, then maybe that's a balance. But if you're not a writer and you just want to show off your images, I'd say go to other places. Mm -hmm. But if you want to have a blog, um, that's where great people like Monica come into play. Yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no right or wrong answer, honestly. Um, you know, one, one blog that I follow is the Sartorialist. Scott Schumann um, posts very frequently, and it's just, um, it's just images. Um, it's photos that he takes 
on the street um, at fashion shows. Um, when he's traveling, he travels because he's a fashion photographer. He travels to you know places like Milan and Paris and London. He lives in New York. Um, and some of his photos have commentary, um, but but a lot of them do not. However, you know, I'd almost put Scott's blog into its own category because he's one of the original street style photographers and um, or street photographers, and he's he's had a blog his blog for a really long time. So, you know, he he got in before anyone else was really doing it. Um, you know, it's up it's it's up to you. There's no right or wrong um, answer. It's what what works for you. Um, if you find that Pinterest or Instagram or Tumblr are not generating the kind of traffic you want, then I would definitely try a blog. Um, we got one more question, which said, "What about Instagram for photos only?" And that's definitely. Um, a good option if you don't have a lot to say but you have a lot of visual content um, then Instagram is certainly the place to be um, that certainly gets to be on your audience and gets into a whole different can of worms that I don't know that we have time to cover <laughs> today <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a, that, that might be its own webinar but absolutely well, but you know what an Instagram too like one of the accounts that I follow is National Geographic and another one is National Geographic travel they, in general, add whoever takes the photo and posts it, adds a lot of um, information, a lot of context um, around the photograph. They might tell a story explaining what the photograph is about. Um, if it's, you know, taken of some tribe, tribal women in Africa doing, you know, some traditional activity, they'll explain all of that. They'll explain stuff about the tribe. Um, the thing is, you're not going to get any SEO benefits from it because Instagram is, um, as far as I know, it's not searchable by Google. Um, it's not, and it's not, that mm -hmm. traffic's not going on your website, and it's also somewhat questionable about how much that's actually being read. Right. Um, and it's also kind of a pain to put all of that information in on a mobile platform. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you do what you got to do. Um, so, Monica, one more question for you: um, mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on writing the headline at the end of a blog post? Maybe oh. another example. Sure, sure. Um, so let me let me tell you what I do for one of my clients, or two of my clients. So I blog for Web.com and Groupon, and I submit um, blog post ideas. Um, to them ahead of time, so I've already submitted my ideas for both for, for March to both of them um, to get approval. You know that yeah, these are good topics to write on. These are just topics that I submit. So one so a topic could be um, actually it's a blog post that I was just writing. Um, how how do you decide whether or not to have an e-commerce site? Um, but that's the topic. That's not what the what the blog post title is going to end up being. So you really, you just start with your idea, write your blog post, see where it goes. So maybe my blog post on how to decide whether or not to have an e-commerce site turns into um, the pros and cons of your own e-commerce site versus selling on Etsy or Amazon. Now that's way too long for you know, a blog post title, but again, you know, that's the topic. So maybe that the the angle of the blog post changes as I write. You don't know until you start writing and you don't necessarily want to box yourself into something if it's not working, if it's not flowing, or if you find um, you know, something, you know, more interesting angle as you go. So then I go I'll go back Seven things to consider when creating your e-commerce site. Or, um, let's see, uh, a branded e-commerce site versus Etsy, which is best for you. Um, now, th those aren't hewing specifically to my formula, um, but I th hopefully that illustrates how I approach um, writing a blog post and how I write the headline at the end.
Any other questions? I don't see any popping up right now. No? All right. Oh, what is a CTA? A CTA is a call to action, which ultimately means it is what you want people to do after reading your post. So mm -hmm. if that's sign up for your newsletter, uh, buy your product, call you, whatever it is, um, you basically want to lead people by the hand onto the next action that you take. they take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and don't don't be shy about doing it. You can you can tell people what to do. Um, they're not going to be offended, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they might they might appreciate your direction. Okay, any anything else, you guys? These are great questions. They are. All right, going one, going twice. Souls. All right, please. So See our contact information up there, and please feel free to contact us um, with any questions either way. But thank you for all the questions that you did have. Mm -hmm. And your patience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone was keeping track of how many times I said awesome, let me know. <laughs> maybe, I need to, maybe I need to scrub that from my, uh, from my vocabulary. But anyway, no, seriously, thanks, guys. Um, have a good rest of your day, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in, um, in a month's time. Perfect. Have a good one.